that we are enjoying today, and I will be forever grateful. John Cuddas. Thank you very much indeed, Deputy Speaker. I, uh, like all members, I'd like to thank the member for Rochdale for securing this debate, possibly the first of its type in terms of a backbench debate that specifically focuses on the Irish in Britain. Um, taking place in this chamber. I've known the member for Rochdale for many years, probably over 25 years, and I'm acutely aware of his political spills, but to secure the debate on St Patrick's Day in the middle of the Cheltenham Festival, promising <laughs> another greenwash of wins for Irish trainers and following on the back of the biggest win in Twickenham history says something to his tacit political skills for timing. And it's an extraordinary grift that we appreciate today in securing this debate. In terms of acknowledgements, I should also stress the role for the member of St Helens North, someone who I know will be immensely proud to be replying for our party this afternoon. He performs incalculable work on behalf of the Irish in Britain today um, and wider UK-Irish relations. He does a great job and long may it continue. I, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, this is undoubtedly an important debate, one that allows us to demonstrate our support for the Irish in Britain, how the Irish are recognised and valued as a core part of British society, fundamental to its economic and cultural life, um, which, as already been said, cannot be simply expressed in a numbers game of Irish nationals in the UK, given the countless millions of second and third generation Irish who shaped the character of this country, informed by their family, identity, their culture and their heritage. Yet the importance of this debate today goes beyond general statements of support, partly because it's more personal for those children of Irish immigrants brought up within Irish families in this country who've become members of this parliament. Um, full disclosure, my family come from Donegal, and my wife, who, who, sit in, uh, who sits in the other place, come from Mayo and Galway, all coming over in the 50s for reasons of work. Um, and many of us do represent communities with very strong Irish traditions and cultures here today. Now, much of this debate might well focus in on the needs of the Irish community in this country, and undoubtedly that is correct when, as my friend has mentioned, the question of maybe 10,000 Irish in England suffering from dementia, deaths by suicide disproportionately high, some of the effects of cancer-related diseases. These are all vital issues, but today is also an opportunity to highlight not just the needs of the community, but the fundamental contributions that, of the Irish in shaping Britain's economy and society over many decades, one that extends throughout Britain, throughout this city. It's not just a question of Brent, Camden or Islington, and Dagenham is a very good example of that, 13 miles away from our debate today, because it's impossible to understand Dagenham without an intimate appreciation of patterns of Irish migration in the creation of the community, a story played out over many decades and still as strong today. I'm fortunate enough to be writing a history of my community. Um, 7th of November 2021 marked the 100th anniversary of the birth of modern Dagnum. Exactly 100 years earlier, the first house was completed on what was the Beckentry estate. 27,000 new homes were to follow. Over 100,000 residents covering four square miles of marshland would follow by 1935, the largest council estate in the world. And in 1931, the Ford Motor Company relocated their Manchester traf from Manchester Trafford Park to Dagenham. The site offered deep water port access, allowing for bulk steel and coal shipments larger than the Manchester Ship Canal. 475 rivers acre riverside site, Europe's largest car plant, 4 million square feet of four floor space, and by 1953 employed 40,000 direct workers. 11 million vehicles, over 40 million engines have rolled off the line. I raise that because when the plant was first opened in 1931, so many men from Leaside in Cork had got work there that some oral histories suggest that the county accent predominated on the factory floor. And later in the 30s, when tractor manufacturing in Cork was terminated, transferred to Dagenham, thousands more followed. These Cork migrants, when returning on holiday with their trendy clothes and money, were affectionately known as Dagenham Yanks. And it was the beginning of a link between the two places which remains as strong today, an industrial link where uprooted Irish villages were planted into large, in Europe's largest factory and on its largest estate, a pattern of migration that continued throughout the whole of the last century, estimates 
well over 10,000 Irish migrants worked for Fords in Dagenham over the years, laying down strong local roots and family connections. One of the few private estates in Dagenham, the Rylands estate, just opposite the factory gates, was literally built to house thousands of Cork Ford workers. And in the 40s and 50s, thousands more Dagenham Yanks were attracted to the expanding assembly plants. And when the engine plant Ford retained in, with Dunlop in Cork closed in 1983, Throughout the 80s, many thousands more came across the water. And the social impact of this migration has been immense, not least in the promotion of Irish culture and heritage. In local pubs, drinking clubs like O'Grady's, the Casa, and right outside the plant gates, the Millhouse Social Club, Dagenham was known as Little Cork, a place of tripe and drishin, spiced beef, beamish, Murphy's, and the rest. There was a term known as the Murphia, coined to describe the Corkonian controlled network of work and political connections, patterns of family and kinship, of extensive cultural, sporting and faith-based communities. Local GAA clubs flourished, including a deep-rooted connection between the Ford paint shop and Thomas McCurdon's GAA club, partly the product of an offerly man named Billy Flanagan, who supervised paint contractors always eager to hire good hurlers and footballers for the curtains. Um, many originated from Dramina in County Cork through an influence of a legendary Timmy O'Sullivan, a main contractor who relocated half the village um, and sadly died in 1924, but still a legendary figure. He even uh, convinced the uh, Cork hurling team to come over with uh, Christy Ring to travel over to play the curtains in the 60s. Bertie Ahern would come down regularly to deliver, present jerseys. And the wider character of Dagenham is informed by the GAA, the pipe bands, the Irish language, classes, the music, the dancing. And they've remained enduring features of the Dagenham culture for decades. I make these points not out of some sense of romantic nostalgia, but to acknowledge the extraordinary economic, social and cultural contribution of the Irish community in Dagenham and its wider role, actually, in powering manufacturing across this city and the economy, the manufacturing economy of the country over many decades. They are indispensable in the creation of our community in Dagenham, one that has helped define the industrial history of this country and in this city. Um, locally, things have changed. Car Assembly closed in 2000. Um, but again, this debate speaks to what is being made in Dagenham today with new industries emerging, which promise once again to strengthen the economic links between the two countries. For instance, Hackman Capital Partners, which will be the biggest, largest film and TV studios in London when it opens in Dagenham in a few years' time, has just acquired two Irish film studios in Wicklow and Limerick. In recent years, Irish migration has slowed, yet the community remains a strong an Irish identity with extraordinary numbers of second and third generation Irish, alongside a healthy number of older Irish residents. These in turn are well represented in the churches, the union branches, and groups such as the Irish Pensioners Forum of East London, a social and cultural group for older Irish, partly funded by the Emigrant Support Programme, which does some fantastic work for the communities up and down this country. This network of support, advice, and kinship has been critical in the response to COVID in the local clubs, societies, groups. Um, the sense of fraternity, which is the hallmark of the Irish in Dagenham, has really come as a blessing for us. So, um, Madam Deputy Speaker, today's debate gives me the opportunity to acknowledge, in its 100th year, the role of the Irish in the creation and the sustaining of Dagenham. It remains a cornerstone of the local community, and that is just one story to illustrate the indispensable quality of the Irish community in this country something that we can honour and treasure today. Many thanks. Martin Doherty Hughes.